My name is John and today I'll be going through how you can go and write really great body paragraphs in English essays. Let's get into it. Bing's Academy, where we learn and grow. Body paragraphs are much more difficult compared to introductions as you are expected to back up your arguments and provide clear examples from the text that you choose inside the core or the body part of your essays. You are expected to work under pressure in a certain time frame and, and demonstrate that you have a logical explanation in terms of the arguments that you are presenting, whether it be relating to the thesis or another part of a certain text or your own argument. That is why today I'm going to go through how you can best structure a body paragraph and what you can do today to maximize your marks in this component. In primary school, I typically did follow different types of essay writing structures and a lot could work. Uh, in the past, I know a couple of my peers used to do Petal, Oreo, a personal favorite of mine is Peel uh, with point, explanation, example, and link. But I think as you move into high school and especially in the senior years of high school, you are expected to write a more sophisticated level of English essays, which is a big reason why I think you need a a more advanced structure that goes along with it. This structure comes in five clear and distinct parts. First, it begins with the thesis, then it's context. The third step is really centered on uh, the technique or evidence. I then typically uh, repeat steps two, three, and four about two times. So you end up writing, um, you know, the context and evidence about uh, three times in total. And then the last step in this five-step process is essentially uh, backing, backing it up to and relating it to the question. The first part of this is thesis. This is usually one sentence and at most two sentences that shows your opinion and stance on the question. Do you agree with the question or you disagree or do you only agree to an extent? This is where you really outline and show uh, which side of the argument that you're currently facing on. Being able to customize your thesis uh, depending on the question or circumstances is so key to getting the top bands on top marks in English essays. If you go in an essay and you already have a predetermined uh, stance, regardless of the question that's at hand, then you're probably only going to get at most 14, 15, or maybe even just 16 out of 20. In order for you to get the A range or to the top end of the marks, you have to be able to customize your thesis and write it on the spot, which is why, for instance, if you agree with the question, then perhaps you can actually say, I agree with the question or to an extent that is correct, but, or however, in every introduction, you will likely have an overarching thesis where every body paragraph will actually link to. However, at the beginning of each body paragraph as well, you also start off with a smaller thesis that is an extension or a subcategory of your overarching thesis that's stated in your introduction. Please do make sure to uh, mix it up though, because if you do three body paragraphs and an introduction, you're having four different theses. But if you're all, all your theses are the same and are like pretty much identical, then it's not going to look good uh, to the marker or to yourself, which is why it's important to mix it up and make it um, quite distinct. The second part of this structure is all centered on context. This is where you write about the background of where your evidence is coming from. So if you're talking about a Shakespeare text or a novel from Romeo and Juliet, for instance, and you are talking about a particular scene, then paint the picture. Who's actually happening and which scenario is it on? I know some of my peers would actually write down the act number to actually prove to the market itself that it really did exist and they're not just making it up uh, that line or that quote, for instance, uh, which they do can and, and can actually see whether it's legit or not. But I think writing the act number can be quite overkill. It is also so beneficial as it provides a general feel of the context behind uh, where that line is coming from. So when you just take out a line that a character has said, sometimes without a bit of background, it can seem really out of place. But when you set the scene a little bit, explain who is actually saying that line, who 
are they saying it to and why they are saying it, it provides a lot more justification and explanation uh, to the marker. The third part is all about the evidence or example. They are the part which needs to be memorized as you have to write it word by word exactly what it's actually from. So if a character says a certain line, you cannot change it to fit your argument or your thesis. You have to write it exactly as it was and then you include a, um, a technique that you can actually see. It has to be a literary technique as well, otherwise it's not relevant. When you introduce the, the quote, explain why it's significant, what technique you actually see, if it's a simile for instance, why is that important and what are they trying to convey when you identify the technique in that line. Sometimes if a quote is too long, then you can extend it across two sentences. So for the first sentence, you can actually identify a technique um, and then say the line. And then in the second sentence, you can identify another technique if that quote actually has one and also break it down in terms of the meaning and significance of it in the second sentence. Otherwise, you just get one really long sentence where you're trying to put too much in and cramming it in too much. I think this will actually be more digestible for the markers as well and result in a more clear cut body paragraph. The fourth component of a body paragraph is all centered on linkage. This is where you explain the significance of the quotes and show why it answers the question. Linkage usually takes the form of the use of technique makes the audience feel a certain type of significance and this means that they can identify with your thesis. As a result, your thesis is especially relevant take on the question. It can take several senses, sentences to get this correct, which is why you should actually practice this immensely before you actually sit an exam. I then repeat the context, evidence and example and linkage again about two times. So I end up with, um, I guess, three lots or three different uh, parts of those sections uh, th with about three to about six different uh, techniques with three clear examples of quotes that are linked to the question as well. The last sentence is all about reference back to the question. This is really important to tie things up and to, if you were talking a little bit off tangent with your particular thesis, it's very important for this step to tie back up and just let the marker know that you are addressing the question from the get-go and you are actively answering the question. This is the same structure that was talked about in the linkage section. Uh, so just refer back to that if you wanted a refresher for that. This paragraph structure is exactly what allowed me to get a band six in both English Advanced and English, English Extension for not just myself, but also for other uh, students who are attending and have attended selective uh, schools as well. Usually you do end up with pretty large body paragraphs uh, which can take up to nearly about a page uh, or three quarters of a page in length, but it's kind of what worked for us here in selective schools such as Girawin and Penrith, and hopefully it does help uh, with uh, your particular exam or essay coming up as well. So in conclusion, I believe I covered most of what you can expect in writing a body paragraph. If you wanted me to include a particular example that really showcases the five steps in structuring a body paragraph, then do let me know down in the comments below or shoot me a message and I'll definitely include that. Uh, just make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.